<laughs> this is a good situation here. Huh? <laughs> good is an understatement, I'd say. This is the best. Wow. I think we should book this for our next tour, or? Yeah. I mean, worldwide. Yeah. I'll ship this bad boy over to Japan. <laughs> Uh, Gary, last time we meet, um, I remember this is 20 years ago, I did another TV show. I mean, this is now for Rock Alarm. And um, in 1988, I was working for RTL Marsh. And I remember we had an interview in New York. And um, the bad thing was that my English was so bad. <laughs> you, you talked to me and I was understanding right. Nothing, <laughs> but I think well, probably because we also tend to speak about this fast. And, yeah, right on. You know, yeah, everything's good. Cool, you know, like what? Slow down, fool. <laughs> so, um, I mean, what happened since '88 with you and Exodus? <laughs> what happened since '88? <laughs> what hasn't happened? I mean, death, drugs, and rock and roll, and everything. But you know, um, the amazing thing is we, as well as you, are still standing and still rocking harder than ever. You know, and um. Despite all the adversity and all the bullshit, you know, the, the trials and tribulations, you know, I'm sitting here with you in a hot tub in 2008 <laughs> on a bus. And today was just bam, it was lights out, you know, I was, I was stoked, you know, you get into like a zone, you know, when it's, when it's that good on stage. And, uh, you know, and the sound is really good on stage, which, you know, we've all been there where the crowd is phenomenal and the sound on stage is terrible. You know, when you can put the two together in one day really awesome you know so i'm kind of stoked right now because my sound was like a million bucks just bollocks just walk walk, walk and, and the crowd was there to match it you know so it was really pleasant the big difference between now and the 80s i have to say just the the drug use is now a thing of the past you know i mean even in the early 80s it was it was an aspect of the band but you know it wasn't the the all defining factor but then like in the 90s you know when we reunited with paul you know, we went from being musicians who dabble in drugs to being drug addicts who dabble in music. You know, it's like music was secondary to like getting high. And, uh, you know, and it led to Paul's death and, and things got worse before they got better. But then, you know, it's like, you know, you finally wake up and you say, you know, it's like, look, if I if I was put here to do one thing, it's play heavy metal. And if I want to do that, I better like do one thing, you know. You know, I have two kids. My daughter will be 16 in November. Wow. My oldest daughter, and uh, so I'm real nervous about that. Yeah. It's hard to be a father of a 16-year-old girl. Well, I try to teach her the, you know, from the benefit of my vast experience <laughs> at being a fucking shithead womanizer, you know. But uh, you know, she's a little emo kid, and those guys are all <laughs> queer anyway, so I'm okay. But how you take her away from drugs, <laughs> alcohol? I mean, the dad playing an Exodus. I, and <laughs> I, I, I can I can draw her up a list of like six names and these are like six of my close friends are all dead you know yeah. from drugs so you know it's like how many people can name a half a dozen people dead from drugs you know I can't you know so so you're now married again or is oh, it no. no no I'll no. never get married again yeah. <laughs> actually I had a dream this morning that my ex-wife's husband shot me well. I, no, no, here I, at Wagner what no 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 yeah. I'm notorious for having the world's craziest dreams right uh, and. I was in the car with the ex-wife and her husband, and we got in an argument, and I, we went outside and fought, and he shot me, and he shot Jack, our bass player, and shot a random guy he didn't like, and then the cops took him away, and then I went grocery shopping with the ex-wife with a bullet wound in my chest, and then I realized, I better go to the fucking hospital. This is, and my daughter, who witnessed it all, was playing with the cops. She was all happy. And uh, I have some fucked up dreams. You have no idea what goes on in this head. Tell me a little bit about the scene, what's going on now in the States with it's, Fresh it's Metal. It's gotten so much better. I mean, you know, because, you know, from like 2003 when we uh, like, you know, started recording again, we had done shows in America that were the most painful experiences you could ever imagine. Playing uh, Fort Collins, Colorado in a thousand seat hall for 21 people. It oh. fucking sucks, all right? And you just walk. I got off stage. I finished the show. I handed my guitar to the tech, and I went off the front of the stage straight to the bar and ordered two shots of schnapps. I said, I have two double schnapps, please. And just bam, and bam, you know, because it was misery. It's awful. The last tour I did was just phenomenal. You know, shows are all of a sudden selling out again. The audience is like average age, like 16, 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were going crazy. And, you know, it's uh, it's looking up. That's for damn sure. Was, so we'll be sold out when we'll be on tour together? Yeah, you absolutely. think that? Fuck yeah. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much, Gary, yes, for that. Gary. This is a really good idea. So um, hopefully we have this bus in January in the United States and we will never come back again to <laughs> Europe. I will stay with Gary here in this bus and we will tour until 2011. I need my bath salt. It's good he's not married. Yeah. Ah, thank you Count for this. Come on, take me away. <laughs> okay, see you back in the States. Bye-bye.